Yeah. So, um, the power of the word. Amen. Amen. The power of what? The word. All right. Um, hey. My point of, 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 of starting. Right. All right. Yeah. I want to be systematic, ne? because when I teach, you know, the Holy Spirit interrupts me a lot, you know. So at least Lina Kibeli the satisfaction or at least get Tomile somewhere. And then when I want Kisa somewhere else, you know. Um, but uh, please make sure you get these tapes because they are for your benefit. Amen. The word works. Hallelujah. Say the word works. The word works. The word is dependable. Hallelujah. Yeah. The word is what? Dependable. Right? Now. I want to, I wanna, in, in, in teaching about the power of the word, I want to just emphasize, right, the, the, the importance of permanent results. Right? The what? The importance of what? Permanent results. It is not the will of God that you should win one moment and then lose the next and then win again and then lose the next. God is not confused about your life. God is not confused about your health. God is not confused about your prosperity. God is not confused about your family. God is not confused about his plan for your life. He says to Jeremiah, I know the plans that I think towards you. These are not thoughts of evil. So if there's evil in your life, it is not a plan from God. Amen. It is not a plan from God. He says, these are not thoughts of evil. They are plans to give you an expected end. That means a bright future. A good future. Right? And then he also says, they are thoughts of peace. When he says peace there, he says shalom. They are thoughts of shalom. To give you nothing missing and nothing broken. That is the will of God for your life. The quicker you understand that, the easier you will accept certain things and you will refuse certain things. Amen? So, the will of God is that you have permanent results. Now, there are things that come by seasons. Amen? When God does things in our lives, right? He does them through seasons. He manifests, though the works of Christ are finished, right? But they are manifested through seasons, right? Now, the seasons are not to bring things and then they leave. They are there to bring the things and make sure that they become permanent in your life. Amen? It's like if you were invited to a buffet, right? To a buffet. Everything is prepared you arrive when everything is what is prepared. But there is a system and an order in which you take in the food. Lankut is that right? You don't just get there and then what's here, everything, what's here, start, what's here, main course, what's here, and then what's here, what's here, what's here, what's here, what's here, what's here. You cannot consume that way. So the works of the cross are finished. The, the, everything Jesus has wanted to do, everything God wanted to do for you in Christ Jesus is complete. He's not fashioning anything new in your life. But he works these things through seasons. Uncle Jesus, is that right? He works, for example, as a church, when we say it is our year of glory, it doesn't mean that God is bringing glory now in this year. It's just that this is the emphasis of God in your life. Amen. So God works these things seasonally. So he'll probably start with this and then he'll come to this. Now, a lot of believers, when God starts with, uh, let's say, ka, 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 he starts with grace, right? And he starts with saving grace. They take that and then him him our power. They now forget what was going on there. You know, they think, oh no, season your grace, if I No, the point of it was for it to remain. Hallelujah. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, Nick, when I shout for joy. It says, to everything, there is a what? Oh, there was. To everything, there is a what? A season. 
to everything. There is a what? A season, right? Then he says, a time for every purpose under the sun. A time for every purpose for every purpose under the what the sun so he says there are seasons and there are what times now god works the finished works of christ through seasons and times language is that right all right right you can go to the next verse now right a time to be what born and a time to what die a time to what to plan and a time to what to pluck what is planted i'm gonna wait there hang on no? there is what god is doing and there is what god is not doing hello there is what god is what doing and there is what god is what not doing look at that he says there is a time to what plant when God plants, he will never pluck out. Uh, and I will show you, right? The only things he plucks out is what he has not planted. But whatever he plants, he, his intention is that it remains, right? Then he says, uh, to pluck out what is planted, next verse, right? So, he says a time to be born firstly he says a time to be born and a time to die what god is doing is birthing he's not killing yeah. hello yeah. so you must locate in this scripture what god is doing and what god is not doing a time to kill and a time to what heal god is not killing god is what healing right a time to break down and a time to what build up he is building i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to what build you up right aha uh -huh. now i'm talking as to his works in your life now there are things he is destroying as it pertains to satan but that's not our emphasis we are dealing with the child of god so that you can know what god is doing in your life right right to build up next verse a time to what weep and a time to what laugh right a time to mourn and a time to what done you you must locate what god is doing right next verse a time to cast away stones a time to gather stones a time to ref embrace and a time to refrain refrain from embracing yeah a time to gain and a time to what lose that's not god you see that as it pertains to the believer he wants you to gain only amen all right a time to keep and a time to what throw away a time to te to tear and a time to sue a, a time to uh, a keep silent and a time to speak right next verse a time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of what peace yeah what profit has the worker from that in which he labors yeah I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. Ah. He has made everything. Hello. Amen. Are you following with me? Amen. I'm teaching. Ne? Amen. Ne? So the calmness of my voice must not deceive you. Amen. <laughs> ne? Yeah. Uh, he has made what? everything beautiful in its what time now you just read everything he said then he tells you he god has made everything to be beautiful in his time so god is making everything beautiful in your life now you see that right he's making everything what beautiful in your life also he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that god does from beginning to end next verse aha uh -huh. i know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives yeah and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor it is the gift of god 
Look, look, look. Go, go back to the previous verse, right? And I know nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to good, do good in their life. He's telling you what you should be choosing of all those times. Amen? Then he says, the gift of God is that you work and that you enjoy the fruit of your labor. Amen. Amen. Work is a gift. That's the only thing. Work is a what? A gift. Work is a gift. Because God works. You understand God works. God what? Works. The divine works. In fact, work is a divine thing. Aha. Work is something the whole spiritual realm is occupied in. It is something, so work is not, that's why, the myth, it is a myth, it is a myth that when you, when a person dies, when they get to heaven, they are resting. There's no such, it's not biblical. Because the God of heaven is working. Jesus says, my father is working and I also am what? Working. The devil is working because the Bible says, for this reason was the son of God manifested that he might destroy the what? The works of the devil. The devil is working. To not work is to operate in a realm deeper than satanism. If the devil, as evil as he is, understands the value of work, do you see when you don't work, laziness is, is a high level of, of, of the diabolic. Amen. Yeah, because it is the waste of potential. Have you ever seen a strongly gifted person? That means you have the potential of greatness. But because you have removed work, greatness cannot... Uh, work is a blessing, right? Because it allows man to take out the greatness inside of him. Amen. Okay, listen. He says, do good, next verse. Also, that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Next verse. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Oh. Can we read this verse together? One, two, three, go. Pause. Can we read it again? One, two, three, go. Do you see that? So whatever God is doing, he says it shall be what? Forever. So when God does something in your life, he wants it to be what? Forever. So if it is a year where he's saying it is the year of health, right? He's not saying in the year of power, you must forget health. No, he did that year so that health can be forever. Are you hearing me? If it is a year of governance, he's not doing governance so that later on when he's teaching on servanthood or kingdom servanthood, he says throw away governance. No, anything God does in your life, it is forever. The seasons of God that he brings into your life, they are to work something in you permanently. Hello? So, you'll find with the anointings of the Holy Spirit, that when those anointings are manifested, there are things that manifest in your life, right? Things that become possible. I'll use the spirit of prosperity. There are people, they only walk in prosperity because as a church, we are teaching it now. They are not prospering anymore. Why? They have not learned to bring in what God did into the realm of forever. It is not God's will that you have temporary glory. It is not God's will that you have a temporary... Listen, the Bible says the righteous goes from strength to strength. The Bible speaks about how we go from faith to faith. It talks about how we go from glory to glory. Right? In fact, when you read it in the Amplified, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says, from, from, it, says it increases in splendor. So God's intention is look at the law of stewardship. Look at the law of stewardship. The law of stewardship says whatever God does in your life, you are to increase. And God looks, comes back in your life to check if you have increased what he gave you. Are you hearing me? So if God 
gave you a breakthrough in employment, right? He looks to see, has that breakthrough, because God is an investor. He looks to see, has this breakthrough that I gave you matured? You know, everybody, uh, 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 the investment has matured. Has the investment of God in your life matured? Whether by health, whether by healing, or and then you lost the healing. Praise the Lord. So he says, I know that whatever God does is forever. So whatever breakthrough you are getting, it is to be what? Forever. Somebody say forever. Forever, forever means permanent. Amen? It means what? Permanent. So we are looking for permanent results. Are you with me, Mother Church? Permanent what? Results. Permanent testimonies. Permanent victories. Permanent health. Permanent success. Permanent everything. Permanent. Imagine now. You know there are evil cycles, right? You know there are evil cycles. Do you know that? An evil cycle is when you can trace that every year of June, something bad happens to me. How many of you have seen that? Like every year of June, something bad you know, like there's a, there's a fixed date where an evil locates you. Now, Satan has worked something in your life permanently. Now you can, you, it's your responsibility to break it. Ne? I love Benson Idiahosa. What a man, right? He says, he says, listen, he says, I told God, hey, you don't need to come down to deal with the devil. I will deal with him myself. <laughs> Oh. He says, all these devils, don't, you don't need to come down. What a man who has arrived to stature. When you arrive to stature, you understand, you, 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 you relieve, my God, you relieve God of duty. Children who have come to maturity relieve you of duty. When God seeks to bring breakthrough, you say, God, send me, I will bring breakthrough to them. I'll, 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 I'll bring it. Yes, sir. Mature children relieve their parents. You see that? They relieve them of responsibility. Imagine if you can relieve God of work. He says, you don't need to come down. I'll deal with all these devils. And then he said to a man, he says, are you a witch? He says, are you a witch? The person said, Angabas, because if you are a witch, you must die now. <laughs> because the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Let's define that. Umuloina. What a man. What guts. You have livers for days. Umuloina. Are you a witch? If you are a witch, you die now. You, you fall now. What a man who had arrived to stature. So, you, you can, you can, you can program your years. You can program your times in the same way that you could have something evil happen all the time at a certain date. You can then speak to that date again. And begin to program good things to begin to happen. Where well, you're like, every year, at this time, something good must happen. You see, you are programming your life. It is the will of God that you program your life. Bringing good cycles. Creating good cycles in your life. By the word. Hallelujah. Alright. Are we still together? I know what God does. It shall be forever. So God wants to do this thing forever. Right? Anything good in your life, he wants it, what? Forever. Alright. Now let's go to the next thing. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 24. First Peter chapter 1, 
verse 24. Do you all see it, church? It says, because all flesh is as what? Grass. Then he says, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. Right? He says, all flesh is like grass. He says, all men are like grass. Right? Then he says, their glory. What is glory? It's beauty. It's wealth. Right? He says, their beauty is like the flower of the grass. Right? Now, he's talking about, uh, 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 you know, have you ever seen a, where there's a lot of grass, but in the midst of that grass, plants also grow with the grass. That's what he's talking about. He says, their glory is like that as well. Right? Then he says something. He says, so glory, we can also bring glory to the level of testimonies. Testimonies are glory. Right? So, he says, people are like grass. And their testimonies are like grass. But, okay, he says, the grass with us. And its flower falls away. Meaning it comes to an end. But. Next verse. But the word of the Lord. What endures forever. He tells you about what is, what is temporary. And then he tells you about what is what? Permanent. Hallelujah. Now. He says. Right. Everything on this world is temporary. But the word is permanent. Now, there is the law of creation which says everything. What noise is that? Can someone go outside and check what's going on? You find there's something on the roof. Right? Uh, he says, right? He says, there's, there's a law of creation, right? To say that a thing is, go outside on the bridge. A thing is sustained by where it, comes, where it comes from. It's the law of what? Of creation. The sun and the moon stand by the power of the word of God. You see, the word of God is the one that strengthens them. You see that? Now, the Bible also talks about how God gave the sea a commandment. And to date, it still obeys the commandment. So now he says, man is temporary. His results are temporary, but the word of God endures forever. Now, by the law of creation, it means, right, if something can be birthed by the word, it will be permanent as well. Hello? So, we can give birth to permanent things by the word of God. Permanent results by the word of God. The word of God is the only agency. Not even the workings of the spirit do permanent things. Are you all here? Not even the workings of the Holy Ghost do permanent things. It will take both the spirit and also the word to bring about something permanently. I am saying this because a lot of you are winning right now. A lot of you have testimonies right now. But if you do not undergird those testimonies with the word, they will soon fall away. But it's not, your, it's not the will of God. It's not the will of God that yesterday be better than today. Are you hearing me? It's not the will of God that what? Yesterday be better than today. It's not. Your yesterday cannot look better than your today. Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at maybe two more scriptures. Right? Is this helping you? All right. Um, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 25. It says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on, on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. What a mystery. Yeah. Next verse. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Next verse. Aha. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Yeah. 
Yeah. He says there are things that can be shaken. There are things that cannot be shaken. And what determines that is the word of God. Are you hearing me? So, okay, maybe we balance it with Matthew chapter 7, right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. All right. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Important, right? So the other one, builds on a rock and this one build, uh, this one builds on a rock and the other one builds on sand do you know that sand is also rocks but mixtures when they when they deal with sand you are dealing with a mixture of rocks and this one built it strictly on a rock one substance no mixtures He's telling you the danger of mixtures. Now, here's an important lesson you're going to see here, right? So one built on the rock and one built on sand, right? Both of them are building. There are common things about these two people. Number one, both of them are what? Building. Number two, right? They face the same circumstances. Now, let's read he says, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Next verse. And the rain did what? Descended. And the floods what? Came. And the winds what? Blew and beat on that house. Notice, right? Building on a rock does not remove the rain. Building on the rock does not remove the floods. Building on the rock does not remove the winds. I, I said something about the winds. Né? I taught slightly about the winds. You know, and I'm gonna <laughs> hey that teaching, my God. I will teach you about the power of wind as one of the elements of suddenlies. Winds carry sudden events. There is sudden calamity and there is also sudden blessing. Anything that is sudden was carried by a wind. When God wants to bring something suddenly, he uses the wind. It is the only force, right, that is unpredictable. It is, it is the only force in creation that is unpredictable. It needs, it needs no, it needs no assistance. It needs no what? Assistance. Because, right, water, water, water needs to be assisted to go up. Fire needs assistance. Land needs assistance. Wind is the only thing. It needs no assistance. It needs no help. So when God wants to help you unassisted, he brings a wind. The Bible says they came, they were, they were on a boat, right? And as they were on that boat, suddenly a windstorm arose. That means there was sudden trouble. When Job was being attacked, the Bible says that all of a sudden, there arose a wind from the desert out of nowhere and suddenly his children died. But equally so. <sighs> equally so. When God wants to bring something. I mean, they were praying, Shala baraka, everything is normal. Then the Bible says, and suddenly. And what? And suddenly. The power of the wind, right? Is that it carries now, I'm talking about the wind of God. There are evil winds and there are good winds. Right? The power of the wind of God is that it can bring resources and it can also bring men. The Bible says when the children of Israel needed meat out of the desert, look at what God does. The Bible says a powerful wind blew from the sea. 
They were in the middle of the desert. All of a sudden, this wind was able to carry quail from the sea and bring it. And the Bible says it was a day's journey to cover it. Imagine a blessing that would take you 24 hours to count. Imagine a blessing that would take God bring so much money. You're like, it is it, going to take me a day to count this. It says on this side and on that side. Sudden. Sudden results. The Bible, the Bible says, Simeon came by the spirit. The word spirit there is pneuma. So he came by the wind. Is that the, for them they couldn't understand, right? They couldn't understand that a man can come by wind. This is what happened with Jesus. The Bible says the wind driveth him into the wilderness. There are winds. <laughs> there are winds. And that's why, right? God tells Ezekiel, he says, talk to the wind. Talk to the wind. Because the wind can carry things. There are things that can be carried on, on wind, strictly wind. Okay. I think you will you will get this you'll get this after a while. Le 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 after a while. Maybe it's raining, ne? So, maybe 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 let me close with this, ne? The manifestation of the sons of God is not an event. In fact, when you study that word, the manifestation of the sons of God, it uses a word that says the showing up of the sons of God. Sons of God, you are determined that you are a son of God or a child of God by how much you are willing to show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's 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 real, right? Deborah says everything was a mess until I, Deborah, arose. You arose, you arise as a son of God. It's not it's, it's not an event. God said to me, He says, He says, you are waiting for something. That is going to take very long. He says, show up. And one of the characteristics of the sons of God is that they talk to creation. They do what? They talk. Because creation is waiting for instructions. Look at Jesus. He is the son of God. He talks to the trees. He talks to the waters. He talks to the wind. What is he doing? He's talking to creation. You, 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 there are marks of sons of God. Number one, a son of God must be led by the spirit. Number two, he must know how to communicate with creation. You must be able, you must be, you must be, this is what we call the absolute wisdom of God, which is foolishness to man. You must look foolish enough to talk to creation. Because the sons of God understand that creation has intelligence. Look at Moses. God tells him, he says, talk, 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 talk. Talk, talk to the rock. Talk to the rock. Languta. So you can talk to the elements. You can talk, you can talk, you can talk, you can talk. When the Bible says that you are a child, it means you can't talk. Children are those who can't talk. How does money come? We talk, we talk, we talk. It's not a consultation with God. It's talk. <laughs> you, you talk. You see this thing of talking. You see? Because the sons of God have learned to do like God. God is in a mess. This is light. Now you do this. And imagine, imagine you are you are in a mess, ne? and you say, "Bank account, bring forth money. Job, bring forth favor." It's not God bring it. No, you are talking to the thing to produce the result you want. This is what God did. He talked to the creation. He didn't consult another being. Yes, sir. 
You talk, you talk to Krish, you talk to the car, you talk to you talk to the house, you talk to you talk to the wall. You talk, you talk to the ground. I taught you God, the Holy Spirit conference. There are people who have given instructions to the ground. You talk to time, you talk to time, you talk to time, you talk to time. Kakwala. Yesterday I was praying. I am at uh, Great Light Church, right? As I was praying, God opens to me the months of the year, right? They stood like this. And he says, talk to them. Yes. 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 <laughs> he says, talk to them. You know, and there was January. He says, talk to January. Talk to, tell January what must happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, honest to God, general, general, I talk, I talk, I talk. Oh, I talk. It's just I was limited by time. I only talked until uh, April. Man, I'm gonna continue talking because I had to give definite instructions. Yes, yes, yes. Definite instructions. I spoke to January and I told January what must happen. Then you know what I did? I removed things from January. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I removed evil. I removed calamity. I removed anything that is inconsistent with the plans of God. I removed what I don't want to see and I put in what I want to see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, you know what I said? I, I said, General, let there be light. You know what I was doing? Yes. I was saying, let me see any other problem Satan might want to bring. Yes. I, <laughs> Let, let's stand up. <laughs> Listen, I've been saying this, I'm, 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 I can't guess anymore. <laughs> I can't guess. You see what I'm going for is mastery. I'm going for mastery. I'm going for mastery. I will move like this and creation will respond. There are things I, I have not left. I, I studied the life of the Lord Jesus and I realized it was not a life of chance. You can kick out evil from your days. You can kick it out. Listen, you must, because he said the days are evil. You must. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Hey. Yes. Can I can I can I can I can I challenge your faith to believe God for something big? Can I challenge your faith? These things are possible. They are what they are possible. They are possible. First Kings chapter 5. Just open it while we are still standing. From verse 1. Look. It says, now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon because he had heard that they had anointed him king in the place of his father. For Hiram had always loved David. Right? Next verse. Then Solomon sent to Hiram saying, I need you to hear what Solomon is about to tell this king. You know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord, his God. Because of the wars which were fought against him on every side. Uh, until the Lord put his foes under the soles of his feet. Uh, but now, the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. Uh, 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 uh. You, you, you 
see, you missed it. You, 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 you. Oh, my God. Are no opposition. No evil. Like, what a man. What a, what, 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 what a dimension in God. You know, I said something on Tuesday. It's just that I didn't want to get into deep. I, I didn't want to get in deep into it about the key of David. The key of David is what unlocks this. A realm where there is no adversary, no evil occurrence. David had absolute knowledge. No adversary. <laughs> on earth, in this earth, in this earth, on this earth, not the new heaven and the new earth, on this earth, a man who was not even born again, arrived at a realm where no evil occurred. He had created such an atmosphere. He had so executed victory that evil was not permitted to enter his atmosphere. <laughs> or, 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 nothing evil is going on. No evil occurred. Nothing evil is happening in my life. The key of David. I, but we'll deal with it another day. Now. Lift your hands towards heaven. Father, we honor you. Thank him for the word. Just thank him for the word. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word. By your word, we are instructed. By your word, we have victory. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. We gain a surpassing victory. Sala baruska tadia kabaria manta la kabaria tu. Ebrete sovrakida baruska ntala. Emen son saya kabaria toska ligaba. Maruska libra katoria. Maruska libra katoria kabaria. Abra dala basansa yaladeria kabaya. Hallelujah. Can you just remove this gift? If you're sick in your body, I need you just to come forward. I want to minister to you. If you are sick in your body, come forward. I want to minister to you. Buddy, why are you sick? <laughs> no, I can see this because she's in the worship team. If you're not in the worship team or in other departments, you've been here, you've not been here for years. I won't I won't shout at you. I see these things because, right? The word works. There are people I have refused. And now, you see, before the house of God, I, I will pray for you in the area of sickness and pastors. Unless she's dying. That's the only way you teach. I should, I should have said, said it. Sade, I keep born. I laugh at you. Me, I laugh at you. But eventually you cock at it. You cock at it again. Uh. That's, that's, that's how eagles tend to be rough, you know. Just throw. We throw you there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> What's wrong? Hi, Clement. No. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, we'll, we'll do testimonies on the Thanksgiving service. Okay. We'll allocate full time to them. Right. Uh, because, uh, yeah, if, see now time is gone. Uh, 